Hi everyone, it's Dave here, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Today I have an interesting fly to tie for you. A good customer and good friend of ours, Dr. Doug Swift, brought in a fly for me that he had been using very, very successfully on lakes. It's a caddis pupa. He did, didn't remember where he got it. I don't know who tied it, so I'm not trying to steal anybody's thunder. But it's a very nice looking caddis pupa. And he asked me if I could tie some for him. So of course it took me a little while to uh, try to determine what the materials were and a little while to determine the tying process. But um, I think you'll like this fly and I think you'll find it extremely effective. And I'm not sure in lakes if it's mistaken for a caddis pupa. There aren't that many species of caddis that live in lakes. Or it could be a mayfly emerger, any number of things, but it has all the elements of a nice pupa pattern. I'm going to start off with a, this is a Diariki number 125, size 14. This is a pupa and emerger hook. The reason I chose it, and there are other hooks that I believe will work just as well, like the TMC 206 BL or the 2487. The reason I chose it, I wanted a fine wire hook simply because I'm using the smallest tungsten bead. This is a 1 inch black tungsten bead. And even on this hook, I had to debarb it, match the barb to get this bead on the hook. So that's one thing to keep in mind. What I'm using is, is 10 aught Vivas black thread. As you see, I have the hook mounted a little bit with the, uh, the curve up. For now, first of all, we're just going to lay a thread base down the hook and slightly down the bend. I want to get this curved posture of this emerger. And when caddis flies emerge, of course they're emerging from the bottom typically. Their legs and wings are all askew. They're trying to get to the surface quickly and that's why this pattern is so representative of that. The black uh, the dubbing looks like a halo of wings and, and legs. Next, what we're going to do is tie in some ultra wire. This is gold and brassy size. If you make sure that your thread is flattened, you'll be able to catch this in a soft loop. And we're going to tie it securely to the far side of the hook. And make sure you go all the way down to where you stopped your thread. Another extra wrap there. And then come back up to the top. Now for this abdomen, I'm using black thin skin. The strip I'm using for this size 14 fly is about half hook gap, maybe even a little slimmer. It ends up being two and a half millimeters for this size. And I'm just going to cut off about a two and a half inch piece. It's just too difficult to work with a longer piece because of the wrapping that we're going to be doing. And again, if your thread is flattened, you'll find it easier. We're just going to lasso this around the shank, try to cup it around the shank right behind the bead, keep it on top in the middle of the hook, hold it slightly to your side to offset thread torque, and wrap it all the way down. Make sure that you're down where your wire and your thread ends. Now this part I actually found out by mistake. My thread broke as I was wrapping everything forward and I wondered now what was I going to do. It ended up being a blessing. What we're going to do is we're simply going to get the thread out of the way. It makes everything else so much easier. I'm just throwing in a couple of half hitches here right behind the bead and we'll remove the thread. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make two wraps of the wire right at the base of our thin skin. Make sure that they're close together and touching. And on our third wrap, bring the thin skin over the top. As you can see, if my thread was still hanging in the way, 
This gets to be a very time-consuming process. Bring the thin skin, stretch it slightly to your side. Try not to uh, cup it, make sure it's laying flat. Bring it back and make two more wraps of wire right at the beginning of the thin skin. On the third wrap, once again, bring the thin skin over the top slightly to your side and bring it down tight. Bring the thin skin back again, start your wire wraps right at the beginning of or the uh, end of that thin skin. Two more wraps. This gives the nice segmentation effect of the abdomen plus between the small tungsten bead and the wire it gives this fly just enough weight to break through the surface film and fish it right below the film which is where you should be fishing it. Two more wraps of wire another spaced wrap. Now on a larger size hook you may need to wrap more wraps of wire on the shank before you wrap down your thin skin but this works out nice segmentation wise for this size hook. Alright, another wrap. Two more wraps on the hook shank. One more wrap of thin skin. Now I'm going to restart my thread right behind the bead and move it back about a bead head's length so I can tie things off without crowding the head. I'll go ahead and move the hook up to more horizontal. And now we're simply going to tie off a wire. I said this is a 10 knot thread, so you can't put a lot of pressure on it to break the wire off, but it makes for a nice clean break if you helicopter it off versus trying to cut it. Then we bring our thin skin down make a turn or two of thread again staying slightly back from the bead so we have a little bit of room here. This gives us a nice even cut off without building up a lot of thread behind the head. I like to use these curved iris scissors when I want to trim something very close like that. So you can see the sectioning of that abdomen how that works out. You have the alternating bands on the abdomen and then the bands over the top of the thin skin. We'll go ahead and wrap the rest of that thin skin down and then we're going to come back again about a bead head length back. Now I'm going to tie in two tan goose biots. Make sure that on the biot you select biots that are nice and thin. We don't have a lot of room on top of this fly. So we'll peel two off and then cross them like scissors, very much like you would do on a prince nymph. Get those tips straight. And the reason I'm staying back from the bead is twofold. One, I do not want to have a big thread build up there, and biots are slick and they need little bit of room to tie them in and really get them secure. Alright, so we want these about the length of the body and ideally I like to have my tie down right where the biots cross. Hold them down slightly on your side. <laughs> I just lost one. Alright, one more time. This is probably the most time-consuming part of this whole pattern is just getting your biot scissored correctly. Okay. Fold them down firmly and make several tight thread wraps going forward and back over the middle. 
like so. Now we can lift these up, trim them close, and they're not extending over the edge of the bead. At this point, I'd like to put a little bit of head cement on by out simply because they are so slick and so prone to move. Okay. Next step is we're going to put in a couple of filaments of midge flash. This is distributed by Wopsy. I'm using the pearl color. Crystal flash is about three times the diameter of this, so for this small of a fly, I like to use this midge flash. I'm just going to take two strands here. We'll make one wrap. See, I'm just right behind the bead. Fold this back and make another couple of wraps to secure it. And then cut these off about the length of your wings. Just a little bit of flash. And then finally, for that, uh, that case on top, I'm using Sanyo's Laser Dub in black. It's really nice, fine dubbing, and we only need just the smallest pinch, like so. Even that's too much. We don't want to overwhelm the fly with this. So we'll make one wrap over the top. Pull this back. Make another wrap or two to secure it. And then we'll whip finish. Go ahead and use the whip finish to cover up any butts that are still showing. And then I'm merely getting my scissors. I hold this wing up and just kind of slice through it here at an angle just to kind of trim it up a little bit. And we have some trailing fibers back here. So that is a nice caddis emerger pattern that I think would fish as effectively on lakes. We know it will because of the good doctor. I think it would also be extremely effective on streams. So give it a try. As always, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll see you next time.